break down several of the big stories of the night. Let's bring in Republican Senator from Utah, Mike Lee, who sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee, where, frankly, you had some fireworks today. Good to have you, Senator. We did. It was okay. fun. Let's start with that, because it was an effort by the chairman, Lindsey Graham, to move through a bill on asylum. Now, Senator Dianne Feinstein, the ranking member, Democrat, says that it's actually going to peel things back, like minimum standards for these detention centers at the border. She says it's a disaster. Democrats obviously fought this. Uh, and here is what Senator Patrick Leahy had to say as you guys move forward with the vote. These rules are no longer in effect. The same Republicans who voted for him six months ago say, the heck with it. Tear him up. Why are we so eager to discard our norms and principles. Apparently, the answer is for legislation that at its core gives the president what he wants in his political war on immigration. So was it political in the partisan sense today? It was political in the sense that you had elected officials in a political branch of government trying to do the right thing. But what was really a, a political maneuver there was the Democrats' fireworks in opposition to this bill, which quite simply is trying to undo a massive humanitarian crisis that's being caused by drug cartels and facilitated by a distortion of U.S. law. So what would the bill do? Does it have any chance in the House? Is it even worth fighting? over moving it forward. Look, it's worth having the message uh, about why it is that we want to reform the Flores decision, about why it is that we need to reform our immigration laws, and why we need a safe third country agreement in place with countries like Mexico and Guatemala. Uh, a safe third country agreement would make clear that somebody has to apply for asylum there rather than here if they cross through the borders of a third country that we deem safe. What do you make, though, of the critics who say those countries aren't truly safe, that there are all kinds of problems in the governments there? Um, they've also got issues with dangerous people and dangerous conditions that people are coming here to get away from, and to ask them to stop in those places is not fair. Look, let's say you're fleeing from El Salvador or from Honduras, and you're claiming that you're subject to political persecution there. You're not going to be subject to the same type of political persecution there that you would be in your home country. So relative to their home country, it is safe. Mexico and Guatemala are safe relative to those other countries. And more to the point, Shannon, we're attracting people to come here in these caravans, and we're enriching the drug cartels by allowing our own laws to be distorted. Lindsey Graham's bill would fix that, and that's why I support it. Okay, uh, let's talk about the debate last night. Uh, you saw some of it. You talked about uh, the last couple of nights. You've seen some of it. Uh, the American Thinker says this, the headline, Why President Trump Won the Democrats' Debate Last Night. They say the Democrat base has become so radicalized that the positions necessary to win its support, socialism, the Green New Deal, and impeachment among them are repellent to the rest of the country and ensure a loss in November 2020. Is that overly confident on behalf of the president, or you think it's accurate? I love the fact that he uses the word repellent. I think that's a really good description. Underused. Here. Yeah, underused. We ought to use it more in our day-to-day -day conversation. But yeah, in this case, he's absolutely right. Uh, the Democratic Party has moved so far to the progressive left, it's scaring people. People are realizing they really are embracing something that we have rejected in this country, which is a bigger sort of command and control economy. We don't want that. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, one of the things I was surprised did not come up was this idea of judges in the Supreme Court. It seems like it's often a debate question, but we don't really hear, hear much discussion, if at all, over the last couple of nights about it. Uh, but this is what Chuck Schumer, the top Democrat in the Senate, has said about a lot of the folks that you guys have put through to the federal bench in recent days. The parade of narrow-minded, often bigoted people who were putting on the bench simply because they've been members of the Federalist Society is unprecedented in this country. Unprecedented. Respond to his characterization? It's false, defamatory, and he's engaging in speech that manifests a reckless disregard for the truth. Look, if we're putting forward people he deems racist, let them call them out. Let, I, I want names. Uh, this is wrong. This is not fair to the president or those he has nominated. If there is someone, anyone in there, whom he deems unfit, he shouldn't be letting them through. So I, I, I'd like him to name names here. As to the Federalist Society, this is an organization that facilitates debate, that actually uh, exposes people to both sides of the discussion. And it's unfair for him to denigrate that association that way. Okay, so you guys aren't having breakfast together tomorrow. No, we're not. <laughs> and if we are, we're going to discuss this. I'm going to take okay. issue with his words. Let us know. Senator, always good to have you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming by.